Hello everyone. Welcome to Tradition Kitchens, a special holiday edition. We're so thrilled to see all of you. I'm Julia and joined here by our incredible chef and chefs and teachers, Joe Snyder and her mom, Peggy. We're thrilled to have them teaching us their apple pie tradition. And as you're joining us, we know it's been a while since everyone has gotten together. We would love to know where you're joining us from. So in the chat, uh, we'd love to hear if you wanna shout out um, where you're coming from. So I recognize Margaret from Boston area. It's so nice to see you again. I'm currently looking at everybody on gallery view, which is a really fun view. I call it the Brady Bunch view. So I can see people um, popping on and joining us for our class. We really love seeing faces on camera if possible. We know some people are in all different spaces. This is one of my faux kitchens that I use uh, when I wanna get inspired about decorating. So uh, thanks for flipping on cameras and saying hello. Hi, Charles from the Bay Area. Welcome, welcome. We also have a fun tradition at Tradition Kitchens where we invite people to introduce themselves and come on camera and maybe share why they decided to join or who they're cooking along with. So we call that the kitchen cam, which is always really fun. Um, or if you're just watching and wanna learn for your Thanksgiving meal perhaps, but Sarah Sangster um, coming your way, would love to have you unmute and I'll spotlight you for everyone. And could you tell us uh, who you are and why you're here? Oh, I didn't know I'd be doing that, but um, I just love Joe. I love these two, and I'm just excited to see what they do. Sarah, just full disclosure, Sarah is one of my best, best buds, but she lives in Vancouver <laughs> for a long time. But yeah, we spent our 20s playing in bands together. So uh, thanks for coming, Sarah. Good to see you, Sarah. <laughs> I love it. I think I have a knack for finding the friends and family, or it might just be that they're the ones who turn on their cameras first. So thank you for saying hello and letting us put you on the kitchen cam spotlight. Um, I see some more uh, folks. Pamela, it's been forever. I'm going to spotlight you. It's so nice to see you. Would you like to unmute and say hello? Hi. I, I, I was looking at my supplies and I only have two apples. So I looked in my freezer and I've got cranberries and mangoes. Which do you think would be better? I think, I, think, I think cranberries. What do you think? Cranberries. Mom? I think cranberries will be Apple. fantastic. Would be great. Yeah, go for it. I love it. Good. Thank you. Of course. And remind me, you are in, I want to say upstate New York. Am I right? Do I remember? That's right. I am. How's the snow there? Um, it's not bad. We didn't get what they got out of Western New York. Only, only about that much snow. Well, we hope you are staying warm and inside and thanks for joining us to bake along. Yeah, I've got my wood cook stove going so it's nice and warm in here. I love that stove. It's so charming. Well, it's great to see you. Welcome back. We've got- Thank you. About 26 folks here on the line and really thrilled to have you. Welcome from Tradition Kitchens. I'm Julia um, and I see Jessica and Tate. Would you all like to unmute and introduce yourselves? I have to bring Tate over. He's cleaning the apples. Hi. Hi, Chef. We're so glad these classes are back. Oh, thank you. Remind us where you're joining from. Uh, we're joining from Maui, where there's also lots of snow. It's tough. <laughs> Is it sand snow? <laughs> yeah, sand snow. That's yeah. what we have. Yeah, so we're uh, we're making apple pie for breakfast this morning, and we're very excited. Um, but similar to Pamela, we do have the wrong ingredients. We bought the red delicious apples because that was all we had to get here, despite the, the thing saying don't ever use red delicious. That's so fun. You, you use those apples and you're still going to have a really good pie. That's just okay, my apple right. pie. But yeah, all apples okay, are great. good. So it's, it's still going to work out and it'll still be good. Okay, great. <laughs> Happy to have you here. And I love the improvisation. It's good to have our executive chefs coaching us. So great yes. to see you both. Thanks for being here. And it's early there. Is it like 8 a.m.? ish or yeah 8 a.m yeah wow i love it i love it 
Well, thank you for joining. And I think we are going to kick off in a moment. Um, and I want to invite everyone for our Tradition Kitchen Zelfie, which is our Zoom selfie, where you flip on your cameras and we take a quick picture together. Back. And oh. we'll, um, Jessica, we'll talk about, oh, there you are. Sorry, my internet went unstable. Not good. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I was just about to invite you all to hop on um, your cameras for our quick selfie, our Zoom selfie, um, so that we can capture our memory of our time together and um, really thrilled to have so many faces here. So if people want to quickly join on camera, we'd love to have you and I'll count us down. Make sure nobody uh, blinks. Let's see, I see Lisa and Jackie and Joanne and Barbara and Charles. It would be great to have you on camera, but no worries if not. Laura, great to see you again. It's been a while. All right, I'm going to count us down. So three, two, one. And everyone knows I take two just in case we close our eyes. Three, two, one. Fantastic. All right, before I kick it over to Joe and her mom, Peggy, um, most of you may have been here in the past, but Tradition Kitchens um, is all about bringing together different people through food. Oh no, I'm having some major internet issues today. Can you guys hear me okay? There, we just got you back. Okay, I feel like I need to like move my computer and hang out a window or maybe move closer to the router. Um, so Tradition Kitchens is all about building culture and community through food. Um, we're so thrilled, everything is volunteer led um, and we donate our time and our expertise and our talents in the kitchen. Also for this holiday edition, we are raising funds for um, World Central Kitchen. We do have a community fundraiser and we invite you if you're able to give what you can. Um, I will put a link to the fundraiser. We've raised 150 so far. If you prefer to give directly to World Central Kitchen, that's cool too. This fundraiser just lets us uh, track our giving and does not take any uh, cost off of your gift through a Facebook fundraiser. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Joe and her mom. We are recording as a reminder. So if you have to leave early, we'll send out the recording and it'll get posted on our site. And please ask questions in the chat um, and we look forward to baking together. So Joe and Peggy, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and your family recipe. Yes, thanks for having us. It's really fun. It was really fun to uh, make this book. Maybe I'll just hold up the book that we're cooking from. This is the book I made a few years ago. Mom, do you actually have the original book on hand? I do. Maybe I'll get the original that we kind of, um, that I based this book off of. So this is called The Vegan Mennonite Kitchen, where I veganized some of our old uh, family recipes into an updated uh, version. Is it the book? No, I meant you have the original. Oh, oh, maybe. oh no, I don't. Oh, that's okay. No. Oh, good. I was going to see if we could have the original Mennonite community cookbook. I do cookbook. have a Mennonite community cookbook. <laughs> you have lots of Mennonite community cookbooks. However, there's no cover left on it because it's all this is about. Cover. This is about what all of our family cookbooks look like. All the covers have fallen off and the pages are stained with lard. And we'll talk about lard in a minute. <laughs> Uh, there is no lard in our book though. So we're going to make a Dutch apple pie. It's one of my favorite pies uh, from our family. I used to work at a bakery when I was uh, a really young child that was all legal and good back then. Uh, <laughs> we used to make big trays of Dutch apple pie squares, but it, it comes from the Dutch apple pie. So we're going to make one of those today. And we're going to start with our apples. Um, Oh, yeah, we're going to start with our dough. We don't want to peel the apples first. Right, we're going to start with our dough. This is why my mom's here. She helps straighten me out here. Or a plant-based butter that works really well for the crust. Um, and that's how usually how I make it. But since I have my mother here to help us, we're actually going to use vegetable shortening, which is perfectly great if you have vegetable shortening on hand too. And we're gonna start with that. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Mom, so in the original Mennonite Community Cookbook, mm -hmm. uh, they used a lot of lard and they used lard for everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you want to talk about why that is? Why they use lard? 
Well, um, certainly the Pennsylvania Dutch Mennonite culture um, was, uh, most of them were farmers. Most of them had their pigs and their cattle and their goats on the farm. And of course they would use those farm products. And so when they um, used, when they butchered a pig for, for eating, they would uh, render the, the lard and then they would use that for their baking. And it does make a very rich um, pie crust, a very light, fluffy, rich pie crust. Uh, it also clogs your arteries. So- <laughs> But there's also a nurse. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I still have a few friends who, who swear by lard, but I have made the conversion to shortening, to vegetable shortening yeah. in the process. Many, many years ago. Okay, so let's get going with the vegetable. Cups of flour. Now, um, again, the recipe calls for a um, cake and pastry flour. This, the flour that I'm using today, is uh, all purpose flour. It really doesn't matter. Both flours will work. It has more to do with the, the um, liquid that we're going to add to it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, all purpose flour is a little bit heavier and a little bit, it, it doesn't absorb the water quite as much as cake and pastry flour does. So we probably need to adjust the fluids just a little bit, the liquid just a little bit. The recipe starts off with two and a third cup, two and a, uh, two and a quarter, two cup. and a quarter cup of flour. Mm -hmm. um, usually, what I do is I start my my um, pastry my pastry with a little bit less flour, which gives me the opportunity to add flour more at the end, depending on how the dough feels. As so how much, how much flour would you put in there? So I'm putting two cups of flour here okay. to start. So we're gonna hold back a quarter cup of flour. Yeah, and we'll use it later. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna add a little bit of salt. How much salt do we need? We just need about a half teaspoon of salt. You can measure it out, you can eyeball it. I'm a little bit of an eyeball cook. Um, yeah, I'm an eyeball cook too, but yeah. for the purpose of, um, of, of this, Actually, you know what? I am going to eyeball it because some of these recipes use too much salt. So now, we're gonna... I don't think my recipe uses too much salt, but <laughs> I'm sure her recipe <laughs> doesn't use too much salt. But <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sprinkle some salt in here. So but perhaps at one point it did have too much salt. Yes, <laughs> if, if you took it out of the old Mennonite cookbook, it had too much salt. I can guarantee it. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you want to give that a little bit of stir? So I do. So I'm just going to use a, a pastry. What do you call these again? Pastry, pastry cutter. Yeah. Up until about a week ago, I used two knives for everything. And then I finally evolved and grew up and bought myself a pastry cutter. So I'm just going to stir it around a little bit. Okay. So we're going to measure out the shortening or the butter, whichever you're using. And we need a total of, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Okay, you need two third cups. Two third cups. Okay. So this is a great trick uh, that my mother also showed me when you're measuring uh, fat, uh, especially like a solid fat, like a butter or a, like a cold butter or vegetable shortening is that you fill up your measuring cup with water and then you put the fat into the water and it will raise up to show you the difference. So mom's gonna show you how to do that now. And I actually really, really like this method. So I have a two cup measuring cup here. Um, can you see that? Yeah, or you can hold it up there. Two cup measuring cup here. I filled it up to one and one third with water. And now I'm going to add um, the shortening into this. Oops, I don't have everything I need. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> And we're going to fill it up to the two cup line, and then we'll know that we have two thirds cup of shortening. This is a good trick because it's a little more precise, and then you don't have to get all of the the fat from around the yeah. edges of the measuring cup. Yeah, um, you have to make sure that your your um, shortening is going to float a little bit. So make sure that it's all pushed down under the water, so it measures it accurately. And that gives me two cups. So one and a third cup of water plus the fat takes me to two cups, which means I have two thirds cup of fat. Now I'm just going to dump the water off. Now, if you don't want to do math, that kind of math while you're cooking, you can just use your measuring cup. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways to skin this cat. Alrighty, do the vegan cooking. 
Oh, no, no, no cats <laughs> in a vegan cookbook. Okay, where you go. Okay. So we are going to use our pastry cutter to cut this stuff up. So my mom actually makes one of the best pie crusts around. Uh, we're going to add a little twist to it. And I'm going to give you a heads up now in case you want to sneak over to your fridge if you have any. If you have a little bit of lemon, whether it's concentrated lemon or a crushed lemon, uh, you might want to grab it. This is not in the book, but I'll, I may add it in future editions. Um, and it's my mom's little pie crust trick, which we'll share with you now to get a little bit of a flakier crust. Mm. So you can see it's kind of, um, that into the... yeah, my hands are clean. Yeah, we washed, um, our, hands. We washed our hands. Um, so you can see it's kind of getting into these little beads here, and that's kind of what you want. Uh, we call them pea size, even though they don't really look like peas, but that's kind of what you want. You just want it mixed. How's that look to you, Mom? That looks pretty good. I'd Great. Say. Let me get the rest of this here. I'm going to let you get your hands in there. Okay. That looks great. Now we're going to add the water. And you want cold water. And I said, why do we want cold water? And Joanna gave me the exactly right answer, I think. Yeah. Well, you want, because you don't want to melt your, your shortening, because you want the shortening to stay cold so that you can get a nice stiff uh, mix. Otherwise, you'll get a, a softened fat. And we don't, we don't want a melted fat. Yeah. And, and the fat, when it's not melted, when it's in these little beady things, will help to make the um, crust a little bit flakier. Yeah. That helps. So the secret ingredient, secret is, ingredient is a little bit of lemon juice. A little bit of lemon juice. And we just want to like a teaspoon, um, you would think, right? Or a little capful. So we're going to use two thirds cup of um, water. Yeah. Or one third cup of water. We're going to use one third cup of cold water. Okay. So give it a squirt. So we're just going to, you don't need to really there we be... go. Give it another squirt. Another one? Okay. Sure. That's good. That's this good. is the look good. and feel. Yeah. So the reason we're adding the lemon juice to the same cup that we're adding the water to is because we don't want to put extra liquid in. We want the same amount of liquid, but since we're adding a little splash of lemon juice, we'll just put the water on top. Okay. And what the lemon juice does is it's a little bit of acid and it will help the dough to rise a bit, um, the pastry to rise a little bit, just make it a little bit flakier, which is great. I'll get you a fork. Mm -hmm. And do you all ever do freshly squeezed lemon juice um, or any recommendations? Yeah, I think freshly squeezed lemon juice would work totally fine, yeah. It would work great. It depends yeah. on how much you need and how much you want to waste a good lemon. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got other reasons to use your lemon, lemon juice might be great. Okay, so now you're going, any other questions that we have? Nope, we you guys are good. I think everyone's following along. Just a quick reminder, um, Make sure your view is on speaker view so that you can see side by side. Or if you need us to slow down or anything like that. Not that Lee. Oh, there we go. I think we're good. Great. Okay, so now um, this looks a little crumbly yet, but we're going to get in here with our hands. I think we might gonna we are gonna have to add more water, but let's see what happens when we um just get in here and start pushing this together. I think an important thing to remember too about some of these recipes, or especially when making a dough or a crust, is you want to in the end you want to get a good feel for it because you can always follow a recipe, but you're you're really gonna know over time by making fresh pie crusts and stuff over and over again, how it feels in your hand. So how do you want it to feel in your hand? How should, what should people um, be feeling? Let me get this worked up and then I'll tell you how it feels. How's that? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, so, so it's starting to come together. You can see that. Now pie dough, you don't want to overwork, but you have to work it enough to get it um, well put together. So the reason we don't want it overworked is because we don't want to start getting uh, gluten-y, right? Is that correct? We don't want the we don't want to exercise the protein too much. That's right. Yeah, because yeah. it um, it'll stay a little bit um, um, flakier if you yeah. don't overdo it. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, how is everybody doing on their dough? Because now we have kind of a nice soft. I'm hold it up into the big camera. Into the big camera. Yeah. Just present it to them. Up, oh, there you go. 
<laughs> now we have a nice ball of dough. It's kind of technology. I'm from the old school. Technology is way beyond me. But here's the dough. It's a nice soft ball. It holds together really nicely, um, but it feels soft and, and you can move it around really nicely. Yeah, that looks really, really perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go wash my hands again. Okay. And then we'll get the table ready for... We're going to roll it out. Roll it out. So while you're washing your hands, I'm going to clear off this space. Okay. Good to roll it out. How's everybody's dough turning out? Any comments from your dough that you're... Those of you who are cooking along? I'm going to add... Pamela is slicing apples, but I put her on the spot. I'm going to add a few of our bakers and see if they can... Jessica and Tate, raise your hand if you want to share. Already, oh, Amira and Lila. I Lyla. already had... Um, um, single pie crust of dough in the refrigerator, so I'm using that. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's great. Some of you are probably old hands at this, and you don't need this little lesson. So if you've got other tricks that you want to share, that would be wonderful. If ours is watery, should we add more flour? Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. That's <laughs> Mira, that looks a little long. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Be generous with your flour by the looks of it. Yeah. Or, or Amira, you could, um, if you have enough stuff, you could, you could start over too, if you wanted to whip together, work. but it might work out. It also you, might work. What are you trying to say, Joe? It's that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I actually think you should try to make it work out because I think that'll be a, a good lesson to know how to fix something. So yeah, try to make it work out. Add some more flour. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna clean this while Amira and Lila fix their dough. <laughs> and we're gonna roll our dough here. I'm gonna wipe that one so, more time. Yeah, you wanna wipe it one more time? I wiped it before we started. So we did that bowl. Are we done with our pastry cutter? Yep. Let's put it here. Um, actually. Great, thanks mom. Okay, we'll just give the table a wipe. Some of you might be using a pastry board or a different board. Uh, we're just using our kitchen tabletop. And we'll make it dry. Mom, there we go. Now remember that we used a little bit less flour when we um when we started. And the reason is you will see because we're going to be fairly generous with flour on the table and flour on our rolling pin. Joanna, do you want to tell them about the rolling pin? Yes. So my mom gave me one of these last week uh, and she said to me, uh, do you have one of these? And I didn't. Um, but my grandfather made this rolling pin. He was a really talented uh, woodworker. He made a lot of stuff. He was an excavationer by trade. He also uh, planted a lot of trees in his day, but he also made beautiful things. So he made these awesome rolling pins and uh, this one's my mom's, but now I have one too. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have one at your mom. house? You do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to sprinkle flour on the table or the pastry board. And you can be fairly generous because you don't want this to stick and you've got a little bit of room to move. And you, it won't all get absorbed by the... That's right. It, it won't. Yeah. And I'm going to cover the rolling pin as well. So now here the tale will tell. Is this going to work or is it not going to work? Now, say this didn't work. Like if it was a little stiff, you'd still be okay. You'd still be able to pack it into your pie plate and make a good crust and it would still bake in to your pie. Um, but my mom's pie crust always turns out so perfect. So just um, um, just roll partially and then give it a turn. Um, uh, and I think Amira, if you're at a stage where you have some extra flour in there and it's starting to kind of look like this, you could probably roll it out. Can you can you see that? Do I have it in the right spot? Yep, there you go. There we go. There, you go. <laughs> there we go. It's starting to look like a pizza. And sometimes I'll put a little extra flour on top just to um, keep it from sticking to the rolling pin. And we're going to roll it out fairly thin, but not too thin. It depends on, well, it has to fit your pie plate, right? Also depends how thick you want your pie crust. Mm -hmm. Some people like a, a chunky pie crust. I think I'm going to do one more roll, Joe. Do do one more roll. One more roll. My mom likes a slender pie pie crust. Yeah, not too slender. It's the too one thing that is universal, whether it's thick or not, is that you do want it to be 
Yep. Uh, just a little bit bigger than your pie plate so that it will come over the edge. <laughs> and just show that to you there. So you just want it to be a little bit around because you're gonna sink it into the pie. And I think we've got it. Now I'm gonna get a knife because that sometimes helps. Um, you don't need to grease your pie plate because of the shortening in the crust already. So if it's sticking a little bit to your, your pastry board or your table, sometimes just taking a knife and scraping it off and kind of rolling it over your hand and then into the end of the plate. And you want to get it fairly centered so that you're not tugging at it after the fact. But if it doesn't fit perfectly, you can always you can always cut it off and just like jam it in there <laughs> and, and patch it up so that yeah. you get it you still get a nice shell yeah it doesn't have to be perfect to it's be a nice thing delicious about yeah. pastry it's a little bit forgiving and you can you can patch it up yeah and besides that it's going to be full of apples so nobody's going to know you patched it up yeah exactly Do you want to cut yeah it off? yeah and then we're just and gonna... give it give it lots of room on the top yeah. so that when you schnibble or when you um pinch it pinch it it's got yeah. room there to so my mom likes to my mom makes really nice edges on her pies. Oh, this dough feels great. This dough feels really soft. And the thing is, it's the traditional version of this dough calls for an egg and we don't use one. And I don't think it makes a difference at all. Why would someone put an egg in their pie dough, mom? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Because it makes it so good. Uh, does it make it fluffier? Um, well, egg has a little bit more protein and a little bit bind. Uh, it's a little bit of a binder. Right. So um, those are two things that egg will do. Um, but as you say, it's not making any difference in this pie yeah, dough at all. This pie dough is perfect. Yeah. Another uh, little tip: uh, if you have a little extra glump of pie dough, we used to do this all the time when we were kids. Is mom would roll out this extra little dough. And we put a little filling in it and you can make a little a little uh, turnover with it. Um, so we'll do that too, because that's always a fun way to not waste your dough and you get an extra little treat. So I'm just gonna roll that out and I'm gonna put it to the side and we'll just put the scraps in it, okay. a little scrap pie. And then if you want your pie to look a little fancy, you just give it a pinch on the edge. I don't know that this does anything I think to the pie, nice. except the there's a little the way presentation. Yeah. Okay, how is everybody doing with their pie crusts? We are we are at the end of ours. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh, where are we? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Any other pie crusts? Sorry, we're not seeing too many people here. Let's see, I'm trying to uh, grab some flour. There. It's coming. Yeah, a little more flour. A little more flour, Lila. You almost got it. Almost there. You're going to have enough pie huh? crust. Hey, come on, it'll Lila. Get, it'll get you good. It'll get there. You'll get there. Okay. Yeah, I think if anyone else is baking along, let us know. Laura, I don't know how it's going in your kitchen, but uh, if you want to share how it's progressing, we welcome that. <laughs> I am way, way, way behind. I am like still cutting the the cutting the the fat into the dough. I'm just behind. I hopped off my Peloton to get to this class, so I apologize. No, oh. thanks for joining us. That's amazing. Yeah. Nothing better than having apple pie after a good Peloton ride, right? <laughs> <laughs> so just keep at it. Um, we are, we're going to move on to uh, peeling some apples here. Um, but if you're still working on your your um, pastry, that's okay. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Good. It looks like Amira's roll. Amira, how's your dough turning out there? It's good? Okay, you got it? Wonderful. Great. Okay. Good okay. stuff. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna put our pie shell away. We're gonna we're gonna peel some apples. And uh, but I want mom to talk about the kind of apples we have and why okay. it matters. Where are my apples? Okay. They are should we be reheating preheating the oven? Oh, oh yes. yes, we forgot. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Shit. Yes. Let's do that. Especially this oven because it takes forever. So every oven kind of takes, every oven's a little bit different. The oven that I uh, wrote the cookbook in is a lot different than the oven I have at home right now. And it's a lot different than the oven my mom has. So in the book, I tell us to preheat the oven to 350. 
no. 375. To 375. Yeah, in the book I say 375. And mom, what are you saying? Well, um, some recipe books and 375 is great because we baked our last pie at that and it did. turned out perfect. So 375 for 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 35 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, some recipe books will tell you to bake uh, it at 400 for 10 minutes. And what that does is it just kind of seals that pastry. Um, but would you but, have a pre-cooked pie shell if you were doing that? No. Okay. No, you would have a, a raw pie shell. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, pre, it, um, yeah, it just pre-cooks the, the pastry and, but, but it seems the 375 works too. Okay. Yeah. Right. So let's get that. Okay. Let's get that. Out. <laughs> so yeah, 375 Fahrenheit. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So let's grab the apples. Here are the apples. Oh. Now I have an extra dish. I'm going to. Just because this is wet, I'm gonna set it in here. So the apples we're using today are Portland apples. I'll hold one in each screen. Um, and mom, can you say why we picked these? So we did a test pie last week with Portland apples and they worked out really, really great because they, when you bake them, they actually turn, turn quite soft in the pie and it was really good. And often I use something just cause I have, gal. I just use whatever apples I have at home that I usually eat. And I usually eat a crunchier apple. And so it gives all apples are fine. It's all going to work great. Um, but for this particular pie, if you want the best, best, best result, then you want a, a, mm -hmm. like a Macintosh or a Cortland, which I don't know if you can um, even get them everywhere. Yeah, they're hard. Sometimes they're yeah. hard to get. So yeah. this might be like a, re a regional choice too. Yeah. But the just the feature of the Cortland that we like yeah. is that yeah. they're kind of they're medium, a little bit tart. They're a little bit tart. They're they're not a real hard apple. They're, they're not soft. super hard. Yeah. yeah, they're not crunchy. Like if you think about how um a green apple uh yeah is re like really crunchy when you bite in this this is not that it's got a softer bite. Yeah. And I think um although I'm not 100 percent sure on this you can Google it but I think they have a lot of pectin and pectin as you know from jams and jellies um is a, a thickening agent. So that's going... why uh, that makes sense because that yeah. pie last week felt like it had pectin in it. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, apples have pectin in them, and yeah, I think right, these. Course, right. So there are. Um, you, some of you will know, some of you may not, that there is a difference between a cooking apple and an eating apple, and cooking apples tend to be a little softer. I guess my very favorite pie apple is a spy, but it's really hard to find spies these days. Yeah, they're a dying. Uh, they're a dying group, variety. which is yeah. really sad. Yeah. Okay. But they were uh, local to this area too, a spy, right? Yeah. I think yes yeah, yeah they were yeah. Yeah. so you'd find them in in southwestern Ontario yeah um another one was St. Lawrence which isn't around very much anymore that's a sad like. thing about the um way food has changed yeah. that we've lost varieties or that there's yeah. fewer varieties especially yeah. of things like apples which is yeah kind of a bummer yeah it's a bummer because yeah. yeah these if you want a really good pie in my opinion you need a spy. Yeah. Okay. But we're going to use Cortland apples and we're going to enlist uh, my shy little niece, Leah, who is sitting over here to help us peel. Okay. When you peel, you can just show your hands. You don't have to show your face. Leah ran a marathon this morning, so she's tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have but, all these athletic bakers. It's very yeah. nice. <laughs> That's true. But we, um, we invited Leah to join us, one, because she's interested and she likes cooking and I love her so much, but also um, it's often that we do things with uh, three generations. I don't have children of my own, as I said earlier, so we borrow Leah, um, mm -hmm. but it's nice to have a third generation representation. So I'm going to let grandma and niece peel the apples. Okay, come over here, Leah, so we can be seen. So Leah, I was telling you this story earlier. Okay about how you peel an apple and what it meant when I was a kid. I don't fully condone this story, but go ahead, mom. <laughs> You've got to remember this story was 50 years old or more, okay? So um, at shower games, when I was a teenager, like bridal showers or <laughs> birthday parties, um, the right. trick was that if you could peel the whole apple without breaking the peel, and keeping it as thin as you could, the, the girl that could do that was going to make a good wife. What do you I think, think of that, Leah? <laughs> I think I'm going to make a terrible one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look at that. Yeah, yeah. I'm good at this. 
Um, and actually, we can go a little bit faster too around this apple. Yes, that is a dated story. It's a, it's a nice story to hear, but of, so we would time. have we would actually have judges who would sit there and decide who had the thinnest, longest peel because you want to keep them as much fruit on the apple as you can. Yeah. Look at that! Look at this awesome peel. Oh, 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 I broke it. it. But that's almost the whole apple. That's pretty that's awesome. impressive, isn't it? That is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I know I supposed to do that last week. So that's not luck. That is all skill. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that you saw me do that for the first time. Do you want to? No, I haven't. I remember you doing yeah. that when I was growing if up. If you'll give that a wash and then what you yeah. can do is. I'll is start cutting. Order it. Yeah, yeah, you've got it. And cut it. Here. Do you want to cut it in here? Yeah, I do. Point fit. All do right. you ever use the skin for anything? Um, um, good question. That's a good question. You know, when we were kids, we used to eat it um, after it was peeled. Do you do that too? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of inside. a lot of vitamins in the skin. Sure, um, but I I don't know what. Do you have any ideas? What's what's your idea of what you would use? Oh, it? I don't know. It looks so pretty. I was thinking like garnish or something. Um, yeah, sure. it could be yeah. nice. Yeah, any I guess anything that you can imagine, I guess, would be a yeah. good thing. Did we have a question or a funny joke uh, to share? <laughs> I I um. Let's say what my grandmother said about apple peel. So if you peel the apple in one long peel, you threw it over your shoulder, oh. and when it landed on the floor, it would take the initial of the person you were going to marry. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it, Leah. See what happens. Okay. <laughs> now, if we both throw it over our shoulder, um, yeah. It will okay, we'll see what initial it takes, okay? Here we go. But this is who Leah's gonna marry because I'm sort of already, I'm kind of already taken and certainly past prime, I can tell you that. I disagree. Oh, okay, here disagree. we go. Over my shoulder. Does it matter which shoulder? It looks like, it looks like, a, it looks like an E. Or a G. Or a G, a lowercase G. Jeffrey yeah. with a lowercase G. Um, Gina. Gordon. Gina with a lowercase G. It doesn't look like a letter. Oh, okay. it's true. I agree. It actually doesn't look like that. <laughs> we but, used to have apple peeling contests, but there was no nothing about like who you would marry or anything like that. So it's fascinating. We should like add this to culinary history uh, and story. I like the idea of it just being a straight up competition for yeah. lo it's longest funny. and bestest. Um, so we're uh, going to aim for what are we doing here? Four cups of apples yeah. slices. And while you're peeling, I'm just going to show you how quickly while we're all peeling, how we're going to slice them because of how we want them oh. to lay in the pie. Okay. So you're going to do it, yeah. Joe? Okay. I'll keep peeling. Yeah, and, peeling. I'm going to and the amount of apples is a little bit um, arbitrary too. If, you're, yeah. if you've got a smaller pie, you might use less. If you've got a bigger pie, you might use more. Um, you want and, a nice, generous filling. Yeah. Or yeah. if you, depending on how stuffed you like it, I liked a nice full pie. So I am going to slice it into um, slices like that, because then they can lay flat on top of each other. I'll do it with both cameras here. Just a nice little flat and we'll, um, I'm going to let them keep peeling. And then I'm going to cut all these into the... She's going to let us keep peeling, but she's yeah. taking up the whole space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. How are the rest of you doing with your peeling? Are you getting nice long peels or are you just cutting them up and peeling them e more easily? It looks like everyone's trying different techniques. There's a question about the dough, wondering does the raw dough freeze well? Is that something you've ever tried? Yep, I frequently freeze raw dough. Um, I've done it two ways. I've done it just in, in a big um, round ball or I will sometimes roll it out and put it in my pie plates and then um, freeze it. And when I want to make a pie quickly, I just pull it out of the freezer and put the filling in and it's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, you want to try and wrap it fairly well so you don't get freezer burn, um, but yeah, it freezes fine. Okay, we're getting close. How are you doing? I've got, we've got some more here for you. Yeah, let's make a nice full pie. Yeah. Okay. How um how many cups do you have? Let's see, I have one more apple to cut, and I'm almost at four cups already here. Okay. Well, I think we're. Don't need a joke. Lila's got one. 
Oh, great. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh... You forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> you know it? Okay. You can, you can... Do you know? Do you know Joe Gaden? Kind of. Okay. Well, then tell us. Um. I feel like you even forgot it. No, yeah. Okay, we're a little stage shy. We'll be back. I'm not. I just forgot it. Thanks for trying. Thanks for trying, kiddos. Well, look. Um, if you've got a few bruises in your apple, just just cut them out. Um. There was a great suggestion from Mike in the chat for the apple skins that you can sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar and dehydrate them and oh, the oven for a snack. Apple Sounds chips. amazing. So how would he dehydrate them? Does he have a dehydrator or would he just set them out and let them dry? I don't know, Mike, can you unmute and tell us more about this technique? might not be able to right now, but no. okay. oh, it looks like a low, low oven temperature or dehydrator. Okay, okay, great. I think I might even try that. I might try it too, that's a great mm -hmm. idea, love it. Okay, I've got a few more apples here. Thank you, Leah, for your peeling. Oh, this is lots, okay. Um, do we have too much? We might, well, we yes. might have to eat apples. Yes, we might have to eat some apples as they are, which is good. I think we have enough for the filling really? here. Okay. okay, we're just gonna take a minute to clean up and then we will start with the next step. I think, Joe, that's plenty. Yeah, I think we might not be able to use quite all that. But Oh, that's going to be a chonky pie. I'll, I'll put some in our little, um, if you did make a little extra dough baby, then you can put the extra apples in here. So I would, or maybe I'll just take somebody here. So I'm just going to take my extra dough and I'm going to put some apple slices in it. And get this out of the way. Then we'll sprinkle it with sugar when we're at that stage. I'm going to use bake it in the oven, a little turnover. Okay. I love that. So good. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a nice way just not to, you know, as, as part of our, our movement towards uh, wasting less and using everything that you have. It's a good way to do it. That's why I love that apple peel. I'm going to uh, suggestion. Is awesome. this okay. Okay, so we are on the filling. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to, do you want to pour the apples into the pie shell? Yeah. So usually, um, I pour my apples right into the pie shell, and I don't, I don't really add anything to them. Some of the older recipes, though, when I was making this book, I took a lot of sugar out of these recipes. Um, they were very, very, very sugar heavy. Um, so I think the original recipe for this mom, correct me if I'm wrong, might have even have sprinkled brown sugar and cinnamon right on the apples, Yeah, I think so. um, which um, is a lot of sugar because the top is almost all sugar and apples are really sweet and they're delicious on their own. So I just like to fill up the pie and leave it at that um, because the great thing about the Dutch apple pie is that it's going to, the topping is going to sink right into the apple so that's where we're at now it's looking good you can see that I like it kind of full because I love this pie um I'll give that to you uh so now we're gonna make the filling so we need another little bowl so is that I, this I, actually yeah so that okay. you can get in there and really work okay it. so I'm just gonna put my pie to the side and I'm gonna just get another bowl <laughs> and this is where we're going to use flour, sugar, and cinnamon. And this is basically going to be our crumble top, right? Mm -hmm. Here it is. So I need um, three tablespoons of flour. Oh, yeah. Put the flour away? Yeah. Okay. 
bring it back. I'm going to put a little bit of flour. Sometimes if I want to get uh, really fancy or add another little flavor to it, I'll put um, almond flour in the crumble top, um, which is nice, but almond flour can be a little pricey too, but it adds a nice little flavor and texture. I'm always very extra with this. Yeah, that's what I was just going yeah. to point that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why, why do you put extra in? I just, uh, because of the crumble top, you don't have to be as exact, right? Because it's like, it's again, it's a feel. It's going to be, you know, we're going to put a lot of butter in here. Um, so I think I just, I just kind of slop it in. The, the other reason why it's good to do that is because you put in more apple mm. than what it calls for. Yeah. So, and the apples are wet on their yeah. own. So yeah. this will um, give that extra thickener for you. Yeah. So when everything yeah. sinks down from the top, yeah, the flour will act like a thickener as well. And it will create that nice goopy inside that I love about this pie. Um, so I'm going to add in a cup of brown sugar. Um, a quick question. If you are sure. using pastry flour, can you use that for the crumble? Yeah, yeah, but well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I generally go by flour as flour as flour. I know there are some nuances if you want to get like high art about baking, or if you're doing like if you're making a croissant or something like that, then the flour will really, really matter. Uh, for this pot pie, it's it's like I think the nuances are are more subtle. Um, but yeah, go ahead and use whatever kind of flour you got. Uh, is this um, a quarter cup? Here, this is a third. This is a third cup. So I'm just going to put three of these guys in. Um, again, this is like, I would just kind of, I just throw it in. This is your crumble top. Um, if it's a little more than a cup. That's okay. If you wanted it to be a little less sweet, you just add a little less sugar. And that's okay too. There you go. And then we're going to grab our cinnamon. And I call for a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is cinnamon's another one of those ingredients that um, you know, if if you want it to turn out exactly a wave, you just put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. But again, I love cinnamon, so I just I just get it in there. And I just throw the cinnamon in there. Um, and actually, you last time, nutmeg. Yeah, if you have nutmeg, last um, time, mom and I made this. We actually put in a couple of dashes of nutmeg, and it was really, really, really. Oh, not too much. Oh. <laughs> Nutmeg is not, really powerful. You heard her though. Not too I, much. I know what you mean. I love nutmeg, but it is so strong. Like yeah. you put too much in, it can overwhelm the, the pie. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to grab me a clean fork? I will grab you a clean fork. Thanks. Oh, she's going to double down on the cinnamon. Are you trying to combat the nutmeg? No. Oh, <laughs> I love cinnamon too. <laughs> um, great. So we got flour, sugar, and cinnamon, and a little bit of nutmeg in here. And now we're gonna add uh, four tablespoons of plant-based butter. So for this, I would not use vegetable shortening and I would use butter um, because it has more flavor. There's lots of different great um, plant-based butters that I use. If you're in the United States, it's very easy to get Miyoko's um, plant-based butter, which is some of the best on the market in my opinion. Um, uh, especially if you're in California, you can get that because they make it in California. But um, I'm for today, I also think it's totally fine to use something like a basal, which we're going to use. This is an oat-based one. So if you're worried about soy and things like that, you, there's lots and lots of options. Like some have cashew, some is oat, some is coconut milk. Um, unfortunately, almost all of them have palm oil. It's really hard to get away from that stuff right now, but hopefully in the future, it'll be easier. So I'm going to put three, four big tablespoons of this in here. Um, why, mom, why do you think there was so much sugar in some of these old recipes? Is it just, oh, people just, the, it's just, just of the time, right? And yeah. it's not yeah. unique to anybody. It's just, yeah, I don't think so. any, yeah. Um, so again, you can see I'm kind of like, it's kind of a lot of butter. Maybe I'll chill on the last one. Um, and I'm just going to put that in there so you can see that it's all kind of mixed in there. Oh, I can smell the nutmeg actually. It smells really good. And I'm just going to start mashing this together with my fork. And really, this is going to also be kind of crumbly. Um, and all this butter is going to melt and caramelize this sugar and melt it into the pie. So 
this doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm kind of mashing it down with my fork a little bit. You can get in with your hands and sometimes I do, but it's quite sticky. So a lot of it will remain on your hands. So if you wanna preserve your, the volume, then I would use a fork. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna melt, but it should kind of look like that. Kind of like that. It looks like butter and sugar, which is what it is. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, and that's it. So I think we're on our last stage here. Oh yeah, that's the very, very last stage. Okay. So let's add this to the top of our pie. Is everybody ready to more or less to put the crumble on the top? Oh, there was a question. Any vanilla? Is that no, something? No vanilla. vanilla. No, no vanilla. You could. Sure. If you yeah. want it to put in vanilla. Yeah. yeah. You know, another thing I like to do sometimes when I'm making apple based desserts specifically is I like to add a little splash of um, almond extract if you have it. So if you don't have vanilla or if you have vanilla or you have almond, so you could put it in the crumble, but would you also, would you recommend pouring it on top of the apples or putting it in the crumble? I top? don't think so. I think I would put it in the crumble if yeah. I was going to use it. Yeah. So yeah, if you're going to use I it, put think, it in the crumble yeah. top. Unless, um, unless somebody out there has another opinion about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the other thing you could do with vanilla or an extract is actually probably what I would do rather than putting it in the crumble top is when the apples are in the bowl, yeah. I'd probably sprinkle the vanilla or the almond on there and then I would stir it around and then I'd put the apples in the bowl. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. probably the best solution. Yeah, that's yeah. probably what I would do. But no harm if you want to throw it in the crumble. Top. Okay, so all right, our second last stage here. So I'm just going to pour this on top and you want to get full coverage. You don't need to press it down. Mom, do you press yours down? Um, well, my pie was really full, so I gave it a little bit of a push. Okay. But, yeah. but I'm just gonna get this crumble top on here. And I'm gonna make sure it kind of covers the whole pie. It's a little bit left. Oops. And we're just gonna, I basically, basically we wanna cover all the apples with a little bit of crumble. It's okay if you have some apple poking out. What do you think of this, mom? That looks delicious. It's pretty awesome looking. I'm pretty happy with it. Paul is gonna love this. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, we'll put the extra. Thanks, Leah. Our quiet little niece here <laughs> pointed out something important that we forgot to use up our little extras. But we can just put a little cinnamon. Put a little bit of sugar. We'll just put a little sugar. Sugar there. and cinnamon. You yeah. Don't need the butter. So here's what the pie looks like. I'm going to hold it up on camera too here. So you can see it's covered all the way around. And it's okay if you have a little apple poking out here and there, because that's going to cook anyway. It's going to get soft and it's going to be great. So we're ready for the very, very, very last step before we bake. And that is the cream pour. So the cream pour is great on this pie. Mom, do you want to talk about why we would do, why this, do you know why there's a cream pour on the Dutch apple pie? No. Oh, okay. like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just, I, I love it because I, I think the cream pour adds, um, when you pour the cream on top, it adds to kind of gets that the like, gravy feel, right? Where it makes the cinnamon and the sugar. Um, it gives you that kind of, um, Soupy is not the right word. Well, it's it's syrupy. Syrupy, gooey kind of feel. And I think the cream helps make, you know, when you're making a roux or something with flour and the flour and the milk go together mm -hmm. to make kind of a gravy. It's kind of like that, but with sugar. Um, so when I'm using um, plant-based cream, I really like this one. I think this is fairly readily available everywhere. It's a silk. It's actually oat and coconut. I also use the silk soy creamer, which I really like. But oat milk, soy milk, it doesn't have to be cream. It can be soy milk. It could be oat milk. It could be almond milk. It could be whatever you have. Um, I just prefer to use um, this one. And I'll usually pour about three-ish teaspoons on or four, or sorry, four tablespoons. Um, but I don't have my tablespoon with me. So I'm just going to wing it, which I think is an okay thing to do especially at this stage of the pie, because you can't, we just can't break the pie at this point. So I just like to get it kind of on top of the 
I like to get on top of the parts where there's lots of sugar because I want the cream to mix in with the sugar. Too much? I don't think so, but you have to remember that you still need the liquid to the thickener. Yes, yeah. right. If you put too much liquid yeah. in, you're going to have it too soupy. You're going to have it too soupy. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point, Mom. Um, and that's it. Here is our unbaked finished pie, ready to go in the oven. Mm. So this pie we'll put in the oven at 375, and we'll put it in for 35 minutes. But depending on the heat and the kind of oven that you have, uh, it might take a little bit longer. It might take less. So, Mom, what are some good tips for tips for telling how a pie is done I when when it's ready? Test the apples. So you just put a fork into the apples once the the pie is baked, and mm -hmm. if they're soft. Um, and if the crust is a golden brown, it should be done. Great. Why don't you go get that finished pie and we'll sure. show folks what it looks like. Mom baked a pie this morning for us to show. It's like a real show. A real cooking <laughs> show. <laughs> and this is what it'll look like when you're done. Yeah. So it'll have be kind of caramely. The apples will sink quite a bit because um, they're going to get softer, though, so they'll fall down. Um, and they'll get softer and thinner, but you can see the caramel top and some of the apples are pointing out. And then can we cut this open? Leah sure. wants to have a piece. So let's cut it open and show people what it looked like on the inside. Yeah. I love it. It's it like browned beautifully. It's yeah. And it smells, this pie smells amazing when you're, when it's baking, it smells so good. So we're gonna cut Leah a nice slice here. And you can see, um, so you can see that, oh, there we go, let's tilt it, there we go. Let it focus. So you can see that it's soft in there. I don't know if how well you can see that, but it's kind of, it should be brown and caramely on top. And then the apples get really, really nice and soft in the middle. This pie smells amazing. It's it looks just about perfect. Wow. Um, that is a Dutch apple pie. That's it. <laughs> Ta -da! Easy. How Easy. long does the um, pie cook in the oven for? So start with 30 or 35 minutes. Um, but you're gonna, um, you're gonna want to look for depending on the heat of your oven. So we cooked, we baked ours for, I think I baked that for, you, I baked it for 10 minutes on 400 and then another 30. Ah, you did that little trick. I did that so before. I would put it in for 35 minutes, but you're going to want to keep an eye on your crust. Um, right. Like that's yeah. how you're going to yeah. tell it's done because yeah. everything's going to cook like the apples and the sugar are going to cook in half an hour. But what, what you want to make sure is cooked is your crust. Yeah. So you'll just look for top. You want the top to be nice and golden brown. So I would start with 30 or 35 minutes and then I would have a peak. And if it needs a little bit more, then leave it in for another five, six minutes, have a little peak. And see. Yeah. So I think what happened with this is um, by at the 30 minute or something like that, the apples were done. They were nice and soft, but I didn't think the crust was quite golden enough. So I put it in for another five minutes checked it I still didn't think it was quite cold enough so I put it in for another five minutes yeah so yeah you can that's kind of what I yeah. do too just you know what trust your instincts don't don't try and do it exactly the way a book says yeah trust your instincts you're probably right yeah yeah and if it smells and looks and feels right and if um you know if the first one doesn't work out perfect the next one will work out better and yeah. then eventually you'll make so many Dutch apple pies that you'll be a Dutch apple pie pro You'll have to put on a bonnet. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Kathy has a question for you. Um, this seems like a pie one would par bake. I think that means pre pre bake a bit. Can you talk a little bit about why you choose not to? Um, I don't think it needs it. Like, so I'm, I'm wondering if you mean like, would I half cook the crust or what if I would half cook the apples first? Um, it, it cooks in total harmony because you're, the amount of time that it takes for the crust to cook the everything else is is done and I think if you cooked anything ahead of time you might I, I don't think you'd even want to cook the crust ahead of time it'd get burnt it would get burnt yeah, yeah. cool thanks for sharing 
Any mm. other questions or it looks like Pamela, did you pre-bake your pie too? Or is it ready to go in the oven? What's happening with yours? You are on mute, but it looks exciting. It's, yeah. it's ready to go in the oven. Ooh. That looks awesome. That looks perfect. And yeah. you can see around the red, because I figured they were cranberries, but they were actually raspberries. So even I'm going to have an apple raspberry pie. That'll even be better. Yeah. That'll be really good. That pie plate? How big is that pie plate? Um, Maybe eight inch. It looks big, yeah. Oh yeah, I guess we never said that. These yeah. are all these are all nine inch pie plates. Um, I, can, aren't they? I can measure. Yeah. It's not that important, but it's not yeah. super important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, most yeah, nine inch. It's a nine inch. Nine inch, yeah. yeah. These are nine inch too. Yeah. That's kind of the standard pie plate, but that's a good distinction. Yeah. So in the oven it goes. In the oven it goes. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. It looks really good. It really does. Oh my gosh, and I love that her oven, everybody, like it's just gorgeous. Look at that. <laughs> the the cool the cool oven and the wood burning stove and the regular oven both are. Oh, awesome. that could I use that. I think yeah, could you cook? Oh yeah. It's it, the temperature is 500 though. Okay. <laughs> <warm>. yeah, <laughs> put it in peanut brittle. Yeah. Let's stick with what you got. Um <laughs> anyone else want to show their um their pie and their or their progress. Jessica and Tay, I'll uh, bring you guys back. Looking cool. Yeah. So we made some some changes. Um, we uh, added we had like some oats left over, so we just like threw some oats in the crumble, and we couldn't find, we couldn't find the creamer. So what we did is um, we skimmed the cream off a coconut milk can. Oh, so that's great. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, great. I'd be very curious to how that turns out, but that sounds those sound like really great uh, improvisations. I think that, that's going to be delicious. Yeah. Or, or yeah, yeah, it might even be good with with the cre like the cream mixed in. But yeah, no, it'll yeah. be good because that coconut yeah. cream will um, make it nice and fatty. It'll be really oh, good. Oh, you did just the cream. Just the cream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. Just the cream. Um, yeah. But I didn't have cream either when I made this one, and it's just made with two percent milk. Yeah. So it, mom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, kidding. I said I'm a kidding. bad word. I said milk. I'm kidding. But I'm kidding. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You can use milk. I always like the creamier versions, but yeah, hundred percent milk works great. Jennifer, should we check in with you, Jennifer Lynch? If you have a moment, um, you might be very focused. Uh, you are on mute. Good to see you. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Should I put it in the other? Nope. I, unmuted. I thought I unmuted. Oh, no, we're good. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. This is ours. <laughs> that looks great. That looks perfect. <laughs> That's a great looking pie. <laughs> it took a lot of hard work to get here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be delicious. Wow. It'll be Good work. Yeah. Yeah, wait. we can't wait to eat it. Keep us posted. And it, I'm just loving all the fingers and the dough happening with uh, Amira, Lila, and Aiden. So I don't even want to make them unmute, but it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> it looks like you're doing the crumble top there. Is that what you're doing? Or the crumble. Yes. Or Good. Yeah, oh, and that's well, all right. that's not working. Exactly what it looks like when I do it with my hands. So. I think it looks like it's working. Because our oven's not working. Well, we do that part. I need this. All right. Well, this is quite fun to take a look. Anyone else? Uh, feel free to raise your hand. Trying to just see who's uh, who's around. Laura, let's see how is it going in your kitchen. Question or progress? Strictly progress at this point. I am ready to put the cream on. So, oh, shoot, that's the blurry great. thing. Oh, that's the great. Thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of there. Oh, now I we can see it. Now we can see it. Yeah, looks, looks good. I'm so happy. So, thank you so much. My husband is really, 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 really happy that I am doing this. So, I am <laughs> really, really grateful for the opportunity, um, even though she, I made it all super 
um, dairy, but shh, don't tell oh, me. Oh, that's that. okay. That's okay. <laughs> that is that is what the original recipe calls for. It's a lot of butter. It's, but it's good lunch. to know that that I can make it for my vegan friends, you know, because in yep. LA we have a hundred million vegan friends. Yeah. So it's really, really great to know that I have this opportunity to make this for my friends. So for thank sure, you. For sure you can and they'll love it. Thank you. I was wondering, Joe and Peggy, if um, you wanted to talk a little bit more about Mennonite traditions, um, anything from cooking to something that you know people might not be familiar with that would be interesting for them to know about, about the culture? Sure. Well, I one of the things I thought when making this book is that there's a lot of um, variety in how many ingredients were used. And mom, I remember when we were talking about it, you said like some of the sometimes I'd make like um like a, there's an apple brunch recipe in there that I really like. That's kind of like a baked, it's almost like a frittery donut. It's also I put it in a pie plate. But the recipe calls for four app or four eggs, which is just a lot of eggs to put in anything. But some of these recipes were written so long ago and they were passed down on little pieces of paper from mother to daughter for decades and decades. And so mom, you had told me that it was kind of interesting because so many Mennonites are farming culture, farming communities. So they would have used up a lot of stuff they had. So if they had too much, if they thought they might have eggs that are going bad or they might have a lot of extra lard <laughs> lying around. Um, that's some of the recipes turned out that way because it would be more a matter of using what you had and not wasting rather than the precision of having two yeah. or three eggs. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, I, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I do know that um, as a culture, they were, they were pretty, um, they were pretty creative, like many cultures are, and they were pretty good at using what they had. Um, so if you had extra eggs and that you needed to use up, you found a recipe to put them in. Yeah. yeah. So I, to that end too, I put a, um, I put a section in the end of this book too, which is called Once Around the Fridge. And uh, Grandma Marjorie, my mom's mom, um, used to have a soup recipe called, was it a soup recipe? Think, yeah, it was a soup recipe. It was yeah. a soup recipe called Once Around the Garden. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Where at the, maybe you tell the story. It's your mom. Oh, well, it was just her way of using up all of the um, garden produce that um, hadn't been used up. So whatever vegetables she had left over, she would um, put into this, um, this soup. And she called it once around the garden. It was kind of a, it was kind of a hodgepodge of what was available at yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the idea of uh, making sure that nothing goes to waste. Yeah. Um, so the once around the fridge um, idea is kind of similar. It feels, it feels like a, an homage to that kind of tradition of making sure that we're, mm -hmm. we're respecting the resources. I mean, obviously Mennonites are uh a very faithful group of people too so I think it would be about being good stewards of the mm -hmm. earth like that mm -hmm. kind of thing right yeah. yeah um and uh so yeah the once around the fridge section yeah. of my book is in that spirit too yeah. but with a lot of tofu scrambles soup yeah. that kind of thing or a uh a good uh vegetable hot pie or something like that but but the other interesting thing is that um, Mennonites are a diverse group. They're not, it's it's not um, just one culture. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a couple cultures. So there's a, a culture, they grew out of the Reformation. So it was really about faith and culture. Um, so the, the movement grew out of the Reformation times in the 1500s. But as time went on, a group moved to Russia and another group moved to um uh, they stayed in Switzerland, uh, Belgium, Norway, well, not Norway so much, but, and then they moved to the U.S. down to Pennsylvania and then up to Canada. So the, the Russian culture and the um, Pennsylvania Dutch culture, which is the other group, um, are not have have dissimilarities they have similarities but they also have dissimilarities and one of the things that is not the same is their cooking style um, so the Swiss men and I have um, yeah they have their own kind of, 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 of cooking that differs from what the Russian men and I mm -hmm. tradition had and yeah. we're and we're Swiss Mennonites and this yeah. is a Dutch apple yeah. pie yep yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Pennsylvania Dutch is kind of and a lot of too um, just geographically for folks. I think most people are might be in the U.S. and I think we have someone from Australia and 
I, I know Sarah is here from Vancouver. I uh, used to live in Winnipeg, so no stranger to Mennonites. But in Southern Ontario, it's a lot more Pennsylvania Dutch and mm -hmm. um, uh, Russian, Ukrainian Mennonites are more in the in the prairies in Canada. That's yeah, traditionally that's been the way. There's mm -hmm. there's quite a there's quite a, a Russian Mennonite contingent in this area as well, but you're right. The um, the Russian group tended to move more towards the prairies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any reason for that, or is that just? I think it might have been the time they came. Might have been the yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the um, Pennsylvania Dutch group came up through the states, mm -hmm. up from Pennsylvania through the mm -hmm. states, so this is a more logical place for them to land, mm -hmm. whereas Russian Mennonites came over, they got on trains, and they headed west. Right, yeah. right. they came right from Europe into yeah. Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why in, like, Pennsylvania, like Philadelphia, there's lots of um, Mennos. Pennsylvania, what are some other states that have Mennos that would be Pennsylvania Dutch? Uh, Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Ohio. Uh, some yeah 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 and how is that different from how are we different from Amish in the United States which most Americans are not familiar with yeah Amish was a breakaway group from the Mennonite group um, and they were held a little bit more to their traditions of um, non-conformity and so they they held to their traditions of dress and um, you know the use of the not not using cars, although some some conservative Mennonite groups are there too, but a little bit more conservative in their approach to life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we do the area we're in right now. We're at my mom's house right now, and we're uh, just on the edge of Waterloo in Kitchen Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, which is southwestern Ontario. Um, but we're right on the border of a little town called St. Jacobs, which also leads into um, Elmira. And there's a lot more old orders around here. So actually, every once in a while, you can sometimes you can hear a buggy, a horse and buggy running up the street. And if you go to the grocery store here, so my husband's from Toronto, uh, where we were living for a long time. And when we first moved here, um, you, he would see the stalls at the grocery store. And he thought they were like an old relic of a time past but actually uh, people still use people still use them today park, park they still park their person buggy, buggy there yeah <laughs> um so it's still there's still a lot a lot of um i guess conservative old orders here too so lee is sitting here downing her apple pie and in her pleasure space <laughs> oh yeah mom here they're also the mennonites from paraguay originally from the yes. russian group yeah. yeah and in manitoba yeah that's right yeah. that's right it's a long, long story. Mm -hmm. It is very a long story. interesting. Yeah, I love. I mean, this is really why my mom and I started Tradition Kitchens. We we wanted to understand people's cultures through their foods, and um, I did want to ask you, Joe, just a little bit about the cookbook. I mean, you've shared you've shared a bit with me, and I was reading on on your website, which I'll also um, add into the the Zoom chat. But kind of, what was the origin story? How did you create this cookbook and your journey with it? Um, well, I started the cookbook about a year or so before the pandemic. Um, and I just, I thought, um, I was hanging out with some friends of mine. I have a, a couple of friends who are really good vegan cooks as well. Um, and we, I had pulled out, I, I had inherited my grandma Snyder's uh, copy of the Minute Community Cookbook, uh, which is a really great, oh yeah, shit, there's, there's some pie requests in the other room. Um, <laughs> um, and it's a, the story of the, Mennonite Community Cookbook's really a beautiful one too. And I talk about it in the uh, intro of my book, but it's recipes passed down, passed down, passed down. And then Mary Emma the... Showalter. Yeah, yeah Showalter. I don't know why I forgot her name for a second. Um, combined them and uh, collected them together, drove around uh, Southern US, parts of Canada and um, collected these and put them into this book. And every woman in my family, has, every everyone I know who is a Mennonite has this cookbook in their family. Um, it's just a very beloved book. And so um, to sort of honor the spirit of the community and, and just fun, it be a really fun thing to do. I started to pick out some of my childhood favorites and some interesting ones. I started to um, recreate them into plant-based versions. And then I would have friends over to the table and we would do some uh, testing dinners and I would invite people I didn't know that well and people that I had just met and I would introduce people together. And over the course of a year and a half, I held these really fun um, tasting dinners while I developed each recipe for the book and people would give me feedback. Um, and it was, I felt like it was a really good um, 
way to honor the spirit of the community as well um, while doing it. And then I ended up putting it together. I did a, a pandemic photo shoot <laughs> and then um, and then put it out eventually in March uh, 2021. Um, so it was really, really fun. Uh, it was really nice. I felt it was a nice way to like participate um, you know, in a, in a lot of foods that I, I don't eat as somebody who doesn't eat animals. I don't really eat a lot of hams and roasts and things like that anymore, but I did make a vegan ham and it is on the cover, but it's a little bit of a project. Um, but it is there if anybody ever wanted to attempt it and it was really fun to make. So, um, I think I'll do another, another version an updated expanded edition in another year or two. Um, kind of following the same spirit, especially now that I've moved to a, a new town and I need to meet some people here. I think I'll do that by having them around my table. I love it. What a fun, incredible story and incredible journey and connecting it to your family and your grandmother and the present day. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. Does anyone else have questions or comments? Something you'd like to ask or learn about, or maybe you need some pie advice as your pie is in the oven. Just lots of appreciation. Well, so much. Anything? Any other words of wisdom? Because um, we might wrap up in a little in a little bit and just give people the chance to like send their pictures to us so that we can see how everything turned out and tag us on Tradition Kitchens on your favorite social network. Um, so yeah. we can to see how your pies turn out, we can make sure we. Yeah. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see people's pie. And I'd love to, for people who did a little bit of a variation, I'd love to hear how they turned out. I'm especially curious about how that uh, coconut cream turned out on the top. I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, I think like with any baking, I'm, I'm sure many of you know, like lots of you look like like good bakers and cooks. It's, um, you you just get a feel for it over time. And then, you know, especially with things like dough and crust and stuff like that. You just know, you know, when a crust is right, my mom knows better than I do. And she's been making them a lot longer than I have, but um, her pie crust is almost perfect every time. And it's, it's a little bit of measurement and it's a little bit of feel. Uh, Joe, we made yeah. a mini apple pie with the leftover dough for well, me. Well, yeah, Aiden made it. And Aiden how made it. long should we cook it for? Oh, that's a good question. I would cook that for a much less time but remember that the pie crust is still the pie crust right so it's still gonna take kind of the same amount of time would you agree mom yeah i think so i think you i think you i would just leave that in for the same amount of time because you think about the thickness of the pie crust is what you're cooking for not the diameter looks okay. good thank you thank you thanks, thanks for coming <laughs> that heart is so cute we definitely That's need a picture of that when it's done good work <laughs> yeah. Good job, Aiden and Lila. Nicely done. Well, um, we'll wrap up um, just with lots of thanks and appreciation to the three of you for baking with us. So feel free to unmute and applause or show your favorite emoji to our amazing teachers and chefs today. And, and thank everybody for um, lots of hearts popping up and applause. I love it. On Gower View, I can see it all. And um, I popped into the chat. If anybody wants to uh, donate to World Central Kitchen, just a reminder, we really appreciate people um, supporting this organization that helps when there are emergencies and provide food and relief uh, to communities. And it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal group. So either give to our community fundraiser if you're able to or directly to World Central Kitchen. Um, we will get to Laura's question in a quick minute. I'll let you know we have four more holiday season classes. I've really missed Tradition Kitchens because uh, we took a bit of a sabbatical from June to now. Uh, but I popped that link in and you'll get an email. But we have a Malaysian class coming up on November 29th that is posted. If you're looking for more sweets, um, we have Rosh, who's an amazing baker, who's returning from Australia to teach a coconut syrup cake from her culture. I don't want to mispronounce these, so you're going to have to come to class to learn how to say them because they have really cool names. And then we're also going to have crepes and latkes. So we're just like traveling the world through food and people's traditions. So thank you everyone for being here. Uh, Laura had a question about cooling, how long the pie should cool. Was that your question? 
Yeah, I think I saw that one. I I think this is per personal preference. I like it cold. I like when it's fully cooled because then it congeals. Mom, do you have a different opinion? Oh, but warm apple pie is delicious. <laughs> and if you pair it with a little bit of vegan ice cream, coconut ice cream, ice cream, maybe. Coconut ice cream maybe. Yeah. no no dairy. Yeah. Um, it will be delicious. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's personal. Preference. I think it's personal preference. And the reason I like it when it's cooled is because it it sits in a shape and it kind of gets that that pectin really gets the time to congeal. But to my mom's point, which is a good point, if you eat it when it's warm, then sometimes it'll just ooze out. And that's, yeah. So it's it's all about it. But remember, apples can be very, very hot. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, really so make sure that it's cool enough to, yeah. to eat mm -hmm. safely. Yeah. Okay, I was hoping for post Peloton breakfast, but I may just have to. Oh, but I, go for it. Go for it. I mean, but I, I would let your apples cool for a second. But I think a Peloton, I mean, Leah run a little marathon today, so she's eating her pie now. I think, uh, I think as soon as you can, you should get into that pie. Yeah. I love warm cake, uh, and pie and, and Mike said apple lava. Um, Kathy had a question that we, I thought we covered, but maybe we didn't, but did we talk a little bit about gluten-free flours? Kathy, if you could just unmute to clarify, I don't remember exactly what you were wondering about, but let's see, are you still, are you able to unmute Kathy? You know, if you want a gluten-free, I, I haven't used a, a gluten-free wheat flour with this pie, but I would try, I think it would be really, really delicious if you made an almond flour crust for this, or if you made um, an oat, even an oat, does oat flour have gluten in it? Sorry, I'm not gluten-free, no, so I'm not sure. So I think if you made an oat flour crust, that would also be very good because you can kind of think of it as like an oatmeal, apple, Dutch apple pie, but I think an almond or even an almond oat flour mix would be really, really good. In which case, I don't think you'd have to do too, too much different, but you might not be able to roll it in the same way. Yeah. And you'd probably just want to press it in your, into your shell. You might have to practice a little bit, but if you are uh, gluten-free, um, the other the other thing you could do is forget the crust just use the apples um put, oh yeah, yeah um, butter your pan a little bit put the apples in oh yeah add a little bit of oatmeal to the the yeah. um, crumble and, and put it over the top and yeah. um it will be an apple crumble and it'll be delicious yeah that's a good idea too yeah. um there's not an apple cake in the book but there's an apple grunt is what it's called a weird name i know i don't know why it's called that um, but it's kind of like a cakey donut and I put it in a pie plate and it's really, really, really good. And it's really fast to make. You can whip it up in no time. And I love it. Uh, there's also a apple butter, uh, loaf in there too, like a kind of like a banana bread, but made with apple butter. Wow. Any other um, recipes that really stand out that you want, you would tell us is in your book if people want to check it out for holidays or anything? Yeah, um, I I don't know. I, I, I put a lot of my favorites in here. Um, I put a lot of things that my grandmother has made that I remember them making. So I, I did put, I didn't put a ton of Christmas cookies in, but I did put in a sugar cookie and a peanut butter, peanut butter ball, I think, which is really good. Um, I also, there's a, what else in here is my favorite. And I also put like some classic dressing, some like Christmas sides, uh, that I've made plant-based because often those have a lot of eggs and no, no drinks, but there is a, um, not to promote my competitor, just kidding. There is a, um, woman in the area who very coincidentally made a <laughs> Mennonite cocktail book called Menno Nightcaps. And it's actually quite funny. And, um, we're, um, I, I don't know how I found her, but I've reached out. We're going to have a little co book event in a couple weeks, um, here. So she's got cocktails and things like that, but I don't have any other, I don't have like apple cider or anything like that. Very cool. Cookbook collaboration coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, Thank you again. I think we'll officially wrap up. I'll get this recording posted if anyone missed anything. And thank you again so much for being here and sharing this special recipe. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was really fun. It was fun. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a good day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.